An unfortunate consequence of watching wrestling, being a wrestling fan, is that you become quite accustomed to death. Almost to the point where you can kind of become a little desensitized to it. You really can be. So many deaths over the years. So much dying over the years. Like, like really, if you think about it, 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 it's insane. And so many articles and blurbs and blogs and videos all talking about all these big names and wrestlers that have passed away just in the past 10 years. It's a large list. And all too often it has just become kind of the nature of the beast when it comes to professional wrestling. Now in the case of Shad Gaspard, it's not necessarily that he was abusing his body, uh, taking his life for granted, doing drugs, alcohol, engaging in significant reckless behavior that put his life at risk or led to an early demise. And, and that's where it gets kind of rough. It is, is that it wasn't that. It wasn't any of that. Here was a man, a dad, sitting there out for a swim, basically, and he ends up getting sucked out and drowning. And he's gone. And it just sounds really weird. It sucks. Like, it really sucks. And I've got to say, like, sometimes you hear about different people's deaths and they impact you emotionally in different ways. Like I think about when Walter Payton passed away on November 1st, 1999. And you know, one of the things that always impacted me with that was beyond the fact that, you know, when it comes to the Chicago Bears, he was my hero of heroes of all time and, and all that. He was also the same age as my dad. You know, so like you do what you do. Like a lot of times we find ways to compartmentalize and make things meaningful to us in order to be able to relate or understand or kind of rationalize what we're seeing, experiencing, and feeling. So that one always kind of struck me. Some of these other wrestling deaths over the years, the people like the Macho Man Randy Savages, the Ultimate Warriors, uh, the Roddy Pipers, the Dusty Rhodes, you know, and other names. You know, they rationalize that a little differently. It's like, a piece of your childhood has left and will never return. Beyond just the sense of loss of that great talent, that superstar no longer being with us, like it, 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 it connects with me, like it resonates with me and it impacts me because it's just another example of my childhood's gone. I thought it was great to begin with, but my childhood's gone, never coming back, and I'm only getting older by the day and more removed from it. And then I see a death like Shad Gaspard, and he was 39 years of age, same age as me. You know, and whereas I think about life, and you know, I used to joke with people about midlife crises and how that'll never happen to me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah it did, and it just kicked me in the seat. And at this moment in time in life, turning 40 in March, thinking about it like, you know. What have I done with my life? Where have I been with my life? Where do I want to be in my life? How do I get there? What does the second half of my life look like, assuming I even have a second half of life to come? Like these have been questions I've been really wrestling with over the past year, year and a half or two. And it has really shook me to the core fundamentally as a person. And seeing what, what, for all intents and purposes, let's face it, is such a tragic, senseless loss of life for a man, a father, that it's just really hard to make sense of it. And the reality is, it doesn't make sense. Like, what's the greater good that comes out of this? How does the world benefit from a kid losing their father? How does the world benefit from a 39-year-old man dying in such a senseless manner. 
It just doesn't. And unfortunately, the world just doesn't make sense. It's like when you hear people talk about karma always comes to collect. Uh, no, the hell it doesn't. That's something that unsuccessful, poor people try to tell themselves to make themselves feel better about their plight in life. The reality is, more often than not, karma does not indeed collect, and life certainly does not make sense. It seems to abjectly, significantly have more desire to impair, impede, and obstruct those at the bottom end of the spectrum from overcoming and making better out of their lives. And I think about this with Shad Gaspar, and it's like, in a lot of ways, you could argue he was just really starting to live his life. Like he had done his wrestling thing, and well, I, was, I never liked the stereotypical gimmick of crime time or what that was associated with. I was a fan of the talent, was happy to see the guys, him and JTG, get an opportunity. You know, I liked the fact that they got a chance. They got a chance to be on national television. They got a chance to be a certain level of star, if you will, at least. They got a chance to make some money in the industry. Like, here was, a, here was a young man in 39, you know, same age as me, but still relatively a young man who, in theory, potentially had the rest of his life ahead of him. Should have been able to watch his kids grow up, his kid grow up. Should have been able to watch them graduate high school, go to college, start a family of their own. He should have been able to sit there on a rocking chair on his porch with MVP 25 years from now, talking about their great, to their grandkids about some of the great things that they did in professional wrestling and telling stories about JTG and catering. Like, these are the types of things you should have been able to look forward to. And now, nah. And that sucks. And this one just really hit me. Like, it's not like Shay Gaspar was one of my favorite wrestlers of all time or anything like that. That's certainly not the case. Um... Doesn't mean that I knew the man. I certainly did not know the man. Yeah. There's a lot of things, but for some reason it really connected with me. And I think it's it's one of those things where I look at it and I know I certainly do this. I'm rather skilled at it, but a lot of other people do too. Is they make things about themselves and how does it impact themselves and what does it mean to me? What it means to me is I see a man that probably thought he had the rest of a life ahead of him gone just like that, and he was the same age as me. And it really is a teachable moment for all of us. And I hate to make a commodity out of a death, because death is tragic. It is unfortunately a part of life, but it is certainly tragic, and especially what feels like an otherwise senseless passing, an untimely passing like this, it is hard to find a positive, because there really aren't a whole lot of positives here. Like, this is a really negative thing. This is a bad thing. Life sucks. Death sucks. And when death feels like it comes too early in somebody's life, that's when it sucks most of all. But if anything, I look at this for myself and maybe for others too, you can look at this as an opportunity. An opportunity to understand that every moment you have is precious. The most precious commodity we have on this planet is not money, it is not material possessions, it's not even our families, it's time. We all have but a finite amount of it and we do not know from one day to the next how much longer that time frame is. So it is incumbent upon us to make the best out of our lives each and every single day. It is incumbent upon us to use this as a reminder that every day is precious, every moment is precious, and that we should make the most out of it. Go to our graves whenever that time comes with as little to no regrets as humanly possible. Take the turnip of life and squeeze the juice straight out of it. That's also an important reminder too of the mortality that we all face. It's an important reminder of just a lot of things. And I use this as a as kind of a point to remind folks that some of that stuff that you hang on to, some of that stuff that you won't let go, man, that crap ain't worth it, dude. Figure out how to move on. Maybe you don't have to totally forget but you can certainly forgive. And in some ways, I'm talking to myself and telling myself this as I'm talking to you about it as well. 
Because how silly and foolish are you going to be if one day you're not here anymore and you didn't get a chance to move past that thing that has been lingering there as that simmering regret or that simmering hatred or that simmering obstacle for so long and you didn't figure out a way to overcome it. You didn't figure out a way to learn from it. You didn't figure out a way to adapt to it. You didn't figure out a way to make the most out of it, to make the best out of it. Or it might not be you. It might be somebody else that you care for. It might be somebody else that you love. Here today, gone the next. And I realize right now in a time like this, we've got over 100,000 people dying just in this country alone due to COVID-19. That's far more people than died in all of the Vietnam War, which literally affected generations of this country. You know, that we could become easily desensitized to death and we see that number and that number doesn't really register it doesn't resonate it doesn't matter but it is as critically important as anything right now to remember that every single life is precious once it comes into being like every single life should be treasured not easily thrown away just like it's a replaceable commodity because it's not nobody can ever replace Shad Gaspar because he was him, and only he could be him. And now he is no longer. And it is a great reminder to me of the importance of being able to move on from the past and embrace the moment. And embrace the moment that you are in right now. Because tomorrow is not promised to anyone, and yesterday is already gone, and you cannot change it. And even if you wanted to change it, don't worry about it. Take it as a teachable moment. Take it as an opportunity to learn from your mistakes, to grow and improve and be better, and to make your moment right now and afterwards better. Just know it ain't worth it, man. And a death like this, the senselessness of it, the poor timing of it, just so many things about it. Like, learn that lesson. This is a teachable moment. And if that means that just one person finds that their life is better from this day going forward because they heard this or heard me talk about it or thought about the passing of Shad Gaspard in that way, then at least something sensible could have come out of this truly senseless tragedy. My thoughts, my heart is with Shad's family, his friends, his wrestling peers that are deeply impacted by this, his fans. There's just no positive spit I could put on it. This sucks, it's unfair. Life sucks and life is unfair. But try your best to learn from this and make it an opportunity to grow and get better and make your life better each and every single day.